So this is part one of this cute little pendant that I have named Nola. Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly Jones Jewellery. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this pendant. It's a, a, it started off as a simple frame pendant, but it, it advanced as the wires took over and changed the design completely. So I've put a list in the description below of everything you'll need to make this, along with all my usual links. We've got Instagram, Etsy and Facebook. I sell all my uh, written tutorials over on um, Etsy, if any of you fancy having a little nosy. To make this pendant you'll need 1.5mm wire, 14 gauge, and I've got one length at 4.5 inches which is 11.5 centimetres, but you don't have to be that accurate with the sizes because we're going to cut some off anyway. I'm using silver today, I haven't made anything in silver for a while. So we've got the thicker wire, then we've got the half round of that thicker gauge. So this is 1.5 millimeter, 14 gauge half round, and that's uh, 2.5 inches, which is 6.5 centimeters. Then we've got the uh, 0.8 millimeter gauge. So we're gonna do a little frame pendant today. So this is 20 gauge, and I've got two lengths at 11 inches, which is 28 centimetres. If you don't have the thicker half round, you could just use a little bit of this. If you put like a few extra bars across the frame, it'll just be just as strong as using this. Just this is tidier if you have got the half round. So we've got a little teardrop cab today. I'm using this little moonstone, seen as I'm making in silver. Mine is 15 millimetres by 10 millimeters so you can use any size you want really and um, if you do use a stone that's much bigger or smaller than mine then just make sure you adjust your uh, your wire lengths forgot to mention my weaving wire so I've, i'm using um 0.315 millimeter which is 28 gauge and i've wound mine onto a bobbin this is bobby's bobbin by beadsmith you can always cut smaller lengths if you prefer. Um, so I've wound about 200 centimetres onto there. I reckon that's how much we'll need for this one. So tools, I've got my pliers, round nose pliers, wire cutters, nylon pliers. If you don't have nylon pliers, don't worry. They're just for straightening wires and just little bits and bobs here and there. I just like having them handy. So if you don't have any, don't worry. So take your thick wire, your 1.5 millimeter wire, and find the center point roughly. We're gonna grip that with pliers. And then we're gonna bend that wire into a V. And then we're gonna pinch that wire so it's really quite flat. And it will want to twist a little bit. Trying to hold it as steady as I can. So then position the wire like this. And we're going to separate them. And that's going to be the bottom of the the peak where we're going to put the point of the stone you can just bend a v-shape and work from the v-shape i just thought it adds a little bit extra to the design to have a nice point coming off the bottom of it so i'm actually going to position the stone now if you move to a flat surface i think we're going to do it point down today and we want to bend the wire around the stone. Now this could be fiddly, so I'm going to bend it a little with my fingers first because this wire is really, really tough. So 
so you want to guess and bend the wire around the shape that the stone is but you want it to be big you want it to leave a lot of space around that stone So that's the shape you want. So our stone fits nicely in the middle, but we've still got enough room to add our wires around there too. So I forgot to mention we're gonna need some um, bail pliers or something heavy duty to shape this and curl this at the top because we've got to curl the top of the shape of the frame. So we're gonna need something heavy duty. So I'm gonna use these big chunky bail pliers. I'll have to add it to the list at the beginning. I think I'm going to go with a bigger size this time. So I'm going to use this um, sort of middle, smaller size. And as I bend this down, that wire is going to get in my way. Using quite a large size to what I normally would. I'm pinching the end of the wire. Now your wire might end up being a slightly different size to mine and my one side is a little bit bigger. But if you cut your wire to the same length as me, we shouldn't be that far out. So I'm going to curl that around. Oh, so we've got a nice little curl on the top of there. And then this one, I'm going to curl this way. I'm going to just do like a little curl here. So I'm going to cut some of this off. And again, with the thicker wire, if you use your nice little cutters, you could damage them and these are expensive. So I'm going to use these chunky, cheap cutters. I'm just going to cut a little bit off there so that this curl here is a bit smaller and I think I need it to be about that big I'm going to do it quite small so I'll cut that wire there and I'm going to use a smaller size I'm going to use this size this time and I'm going to curl this one way so one goes one way one goes the other way and hopefully I haven't altered that shape too much there so I did misshape my wires a little bit but I've altered it and that's what I've got now I'm trying to show you without blocking out the light so I've still got a nice gap around the stone and I've got some little curls at the top there. So to attach these wires at the top here, I'm just going to use a little bit of weaving wire. I'm going to cut off a short length. Just a little bit, is that about four inches? And I'm going to wrap around wrap around one of the sides a few times so we are inside one of the loops and then I'm going to go around the both of them together a few times And then go a few times around one of the loops to hold it in place. We need to keep cut off the wire at both ends. And flatten down any sharp bits. 
So now we need to attach the half round wire. I always refer to this as a bar. I don't know what it's called normally. <clears throat> so if this is the frame, I always refer to these as the frame bar <clears throat> as it holds a stone from across the back. So taking your frame bar wire, I'm going to just attach it at this angle. So I'm going to zigzag across it. So I'm going to go across like this and then I'm going to come back across to this side to here. It's Gracie snoring if you can hear loads of noise. So taking those um, round nose, I'm going to use my round nose this time. I'm just going to curl the end of the wire around this here. The half round wire in um, fine silver, which is what I've got, is quite soft, so it's not so tough on the pliers. I started using fine silver for the thicker wires, because it's a lot easier to handle. And then I use sterling for the base wires, and I use fine silver for the weaving wire that's just really nice to weave with. I don't use fine for the base wires, the 0.8, because it's a bit too soft. So we want that to come there. If you just have a look at your stone, you can work out the best angle for it. If you imagine you want it to come across towards the top, and then the next angle when it comes back will be towards the bottom. So you want to get it to that angle like that. So that's going to come around on that side. Try not to let it move about too much. And as you do this, I, I don't know if it's just me, I pull the frame together as I do that and then when you finish putting all these bars in your stone doesn't fit so keep checking that your stone fits because as you've got this thicker wire wrapped around the edges that's why I kept going on about the gap earlier you still want your stone to fit in there once you've got this bar in place So now we're going to bring this one over. Now it's got to sit at the back, so I'm going to post it back through. Because what we want is the wire has to go from the back, because that's the point, the, the stone's going to sit on this, so it has to go to the back. Hold on. Just squeeze it around here nice and tight and then it has to come across here but we don't want it on the front of the wire we want it on the back so you need to make a little I'm going to make up another word now we need to make a little foot so that the wire bends like that do you know what I mean I've made a foot. I'm going to call it a foot. So this wire now sits at the back of the frame. Do you know what I mean? That makes sense. And then here, I'm going to pull it down a little bit. I feel like I'm talking too much in this video. So the stone is going to make sure your stone fits and make sure your bars go nicely across the back to keep the stone in. So we're now going to attach around this side. Of course now I'm going backwards so the flat side of the wire is going to be exposed but we should cover that up in a bit. And then as you go 
take care not to pull the wires together. Oh, he's doing work first. So you want to pull that around so it's nice and secure and then cut off the extra bits of both ends and press them around with your pliers. So I've attached that side. I've cut the edges off and flattened them down with pliers. That's where the stone's going to sit. And if I show you the back, you can see that the wire goes across the stone twice, so it's going to hold it in firmly from the back. So that's our main goal. We want a frame to hold it securely and we want the bars to hold the stone in from the back. Probably see it better from this angle. So you can see I've still got a gap around the stone, that's so I can fit my wires in. So that's what we have so far. So now take your base wire, the 0.8mm 20 gauge wire, and we're going to attach it to the top here. And we're just going to attach the end, so we're going to attach both wires so they fix to that top part there. So as we attach the other one, we're just going to go around and we'll start by bending the wire. And here's where I wish I'd have worked in copper because this is my silver base wire is really tough. This is my sterling wire. Sterling is really tough to work with. So wrap your wire around a few times and press it around the frame. So that's the one fixed on there. Pressed it round with my pliers and I've clipped the end off. So now I'm going to attach the other one. Push that up to the top there. I'm going to attach the other one below it. And that's going to curl around and go to the other side. So that's going to attach there. So that's both wires attached there. So take your weaving wire, we're going to turn it over, I'm going to take the top wire and I'm going to attach to that top wire. I am going to be adding coils but I think we'll just tie the wires together to start with so they don't just keep moving around. So wrap three times around that one wire, which is the bottom wire, but I've turned it upside down, so it's now the top wire. And we'll slide that down. And this will hold so much better in a bit, because we've got long wires and we want a frame. And we've got them right on the end, so they're going to be swinging about. And we're going to go around both the wires a few times just to hold them together. Oh, what a nightmare. And my lights are in the way. Come on. Then come back up between. So I've gone around both just to hold them together. And now I'm going to continue to add coils to that single wire there. So coils is we're just going around and around that single wire. So 
So I've added coils to that wire, done about an inch. Turn my tape over. So I've done about two centimetres of coils, a little bit more. Oh, we need to cut that tail off from the beginning. So we'll put that wire over there for a bit. We're just going to shape these wires. Put my stone in there. I don't know what difference it's going to make. I'm just thinking as I bend it around, I'll have the stone to lean on, but we'll have to see what happens. So I'm just taking the top wire and I'm going to scoop it around. Nice and tight, small loop. Wires are so long and I'm so close. So there we go, it hasn't come anywhere near the wire just yet. That's the kind of shape I want. So it loops around and then it scoops, sorry. So it loops around and then it scoops out to the side. Right. And then the other wire, that's going to keep falling out, is going to go around as well, above it. So make sure your weaves, your coils are all pushed together. And then carefully bend the wire around. And we want it to follow that shape. As it gets to there, I'm going to join them together. So I'm securing them a bit so they don't move. So that can go back over that side. Pull the wires together there. So then I'm going to just wrap around both wires twice hold them together come up between and wrap around that top wire twice so now i'm going to do a little weave just across the two wires just for a little bit so we've got two wraps around both wires two wraps around that single wire and we'll do that a few more times just bringing the the weave down the wires a little two wraps around the both wires come up between the two wires two wraps around that top wire Repeat that a few more times. So I've repeated that weave like six times. And my wires keep sliding down, so I have to keep sliding your wires back up the frame as well. Reposition my stone so I can see. And I've shaped the weave a little bit around the top of the stone there. So I'm going to cut my weaving wire because my weaving wire is attached to my bobbin. So I'm going to push all that up there and I'm going to cut about, I think it's 12 inches, but I'll just check. Yeah, so I've cut my wire, so I've got 12 inches of wire. And at this point here, I'm just below the bar, where the bar joins onto the frame there. I'm going to um, just attach the weave to the bar and I want it to sit over the top. So it looks tidy. So I'm now going to take 
the wire so it's come around the top wire take that stone out for a minute so I'm pulling the frame the wire so I'm pulling the weave over the frame there so it's hiding the frame and I'm going to take the wire around the frame and around the two wires so I'm still doing the weave repeat but I'm attaching it to the frame and make sure it sits next to the wires so it's tidy I'm going to go around um, twice so it still looks like part of the weave and then come up between the two wires as if you're carrying on with the weave So that secured that to the frame and holds it in place and it hides that side of the frame there. So we're now going to add more repeats to that weave. So keep adding more repeats to the weave. Just the two wires now, not the frame. We're adding repeats to just the two wires. So I've added more repeats to that weave. I've missed one there. So what I'm going to do now is pull the weave over the stone a little bit and I'm going to curve it around this way. A little bit unpredictable. So I'm going to take the wires around this side of the frame there so we've got this nice swooshy shape. So I'm taking the, the wire, the weave, over the bottom of the stone and I'm shaping it around into a loop. So the weave needs to continue a little bit further just to reach around to the side there. So I've added weave repeats to that and you really have to keep pushing your stone down. So when your weave reaches the bottom there, I'm going to cut that off. Where shall I cut it? I'll pull it through. Cut it off there. And then holding that in place, I'm going to take these two wires around the frame. As I keep, as I'm going to keep saying, this will be much easier in copper. I'm going to push those wires all the way around the frame on that side there. So I want these wires to this weave to tilt a little bit to hold the stone, but then I want the weave here to be flatter. These two wires come out the bottom, so the stone's got that one side covered, and then the two wires go around. I'm going to have to keep that in to hold it, I think, to the other side. So that's what we've got so far. 
So now we're going to weave across the two wires. So take your weaving wire. You're going to add three wraps to the top wire. And then we're going to do three wraps around both wires. Grace is still moaning. And three wraps around the top wire. And three wraps around both wires. And keep pressing your weave together as you go. So I've done eight repeats of that weave and you really must keep pushing it together as you go. I need to cut that tail end off. So that's the end of part one. Click the link on the screen for part two or follow the link in the description below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.